The Matura National Park is the largest protected area in Trinidad and Tobago. With an area of over 9,000 hectares, it measures about one-third of the area of Tobago. This forest was designated an environmentally sensitive area by the Environmental Management Authority in 2004, and it is located at the eastern end of Trinidad's northern range. The Matura National Park is located at the eastern part of the Matura Forest Reserve. Part of it is abandoned cocoa and coffee estate. And there are about 5% within the park, there are people who live there. Right? People on their private property, right? Private land. That's where the cocoa and coffee estate are made up of. So there are people who live within the park, right? That's the private land section. But most of it is um, evergreen forest. And I believe it's the only remaining piece of green forest within Trinidad and Tobago. The Matura National Park, one of the richness uh, which makes this park unique in Trinidad and Tobago, is one you there's a river sea relationship between the Salibi River and the Rio Seco um, River. The uniqueness itself of the unique landscape, we have the Rio Seco Sulphur Spring the Rio Seco waterfall and most significantly the Rio Seco rock bridge form formation. The flora component of the, the, the park itself is, the, is specified by its rich mountain forest which is about 3,000 hectares and we have species such as the water care inside there, we have the Mora excelsa, Cap Crapo, we have Siret, these form some of the predominant flora species we have there, but we also have the rich endemism of species of fauna inside here as well. The Matura National Park is home to the, our endemic Pawi. We have our endangered ocelot. Plus, there has been recent sighting of the, the river otter within parts of the, the Matura National Park itself. The, within the National Park, you will find all of the existing species of uh, fauna in Trinidad. And that's unique because you have an, an opportunity to see a guti deer, lap, wild hog, ocelots, um, you name it. That's the only area that you can probably accurately see these animals. It has a unique range of, of flora. It has pristine, untouched rivers, and it's accessible, it's accessible, especially on the Grand River side. Grand River is one of the, the, the two gateways to the park. And because of that, it attracts a lot of ecotourists, both national and international. Well, agricultural purposes, farmers there, who have their estate, who still see about the cocoa coffee estate, banana planting, citrus, you just name it, farming in general. The park is surrounded by 14 coastal communities, including Matura, Balandra, Grand River, and Matlot. The livelihoods of the people who live here depend partially on the resources of this protected area. One of the main objectives of safeguarding this area is to protect critical wildlife habitats and control the threat of illegal hunting throughout the park. According to the Environmental Management Act, one can be fined up to $100,000 and face imprisonment for up to two years if one commits an offense as outlined in the EM Act against an ESA or ESS. Forest fires are also a threat to the species that inhabit this park. Whether man-made or natural in origin, a wayward spark has the potential to turn parts of this pristine forest into a spiral of smoke. The Forestry Division of the Ministry of the Environment and Water Resources is responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the Matura National Park. All activities within the park um, is vested in the authority of the National Park Section of the Forestry Division. In 2004, a stakeholder management committee was set up by the EMA to oversee the management of the park. This continues to be done through meetings with main agencies, community-based organizations, and non-governmental organizations involved in the area. The, the Material National Park presently 
is managed by the forestry division in collaboration with communities. Communities do voluntary patrols. On those patrols, you will remove litter on anything that's not natural to the park. Uh, forestry patrol has the oversight in terms of the enforcement. So it's a collaborative effort between community and state. And the community really is the one who is in there because the park is within their environs. There is also a need to promote and facilitate nature-based tourism and to better understand the park's ecology from a scientific perspective. Currently, scientists are studying over 200 species of trees and vines found in the forest and their relation to species on the South American mainland. The EMA plays an important role in public education and awareness of the Matura National Park. These strategies take the form of lectures, interviews, media releases, signage, posters and special publications. Some programs are also specially targeted to children and young adults. We attract every year to this community alone persons from over 100 international destinations who come to see turtles, just turtles. These are ecotourists. And what we, have, what we have observed is that one of the things they inquire, what else can we do while we're here? Are there any interesting things we can see? These are people coming from very polluted environments, no fresh air, um, relatively they have never experienced a clean running river where they live. The Matura National Park is a potential gold mine for ecotourism. If we can train and develop ecotourism, if we can take the community people and get them trained as guides to take people into the park to observe the wildlife, to, 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 to bask in the beautiful rivers and waterfalls, and they, are, and they get paid for their service, what you will find happening is that the park, with its abundance of, of, of in sustainable income opportunities, would create livelihoods for the communities and at the same time lend to the protection and better management of the park. Securing its long-term survival rests on our intervention through sharing knowledge about the area, reporting illegal activities and through sustainable management. The Matura National Park is an international treasure, one that we must manage responsibly to ensure its continued existence for generations to come.